uh, can you just take us through that process of having the Big Ten title game taken away from you and working to get back and uh, how great that felt to get your kind of uh, re redemption there against Clemson? Uh, it was tough. I mean, going into the going into the week, uh, I think that was the best I ever did. I mean, my legs were under me. Uh, I was practicing real hard, uh, trying to get in, go into the Big Ten championship, uh, go, try to go against a good Northwestern defense, and uh, just try to win that game and uh, to get that tap on my shoulder. It was tough. Uh, called my parents right after and had to go quarantine for ten days in a hotel. It was tough. I didn't really do much in a hotel, just, uh, just try to stay in shape, uh, lift in a little bit uh, with, with bands. We couldn't really lift or run, so we just had to work out with bands and do a lot of push-ups, sit-ups, uh, stay in there. So when I come out, when I came out, it was tough coming back to practice. Uh, I was getting real tired in practice, and just sleeping a lot, and I didn't really get my legs back to towards the end of the week, and uh, that, I think, Wednesday or yeah, Wednesday was the day I I started to feel real, to start to feel good and uh, like that. Thankfully, I had a good game on on Friday. Next is Dan Hope. Dan. Hey, Chris. Obviously, you know Devonte Smith's got a lot of headlines going into this game as the Heisman winner. Do you enjoy having the opportunity as a competitor to kind of go head to head with him in this game? Uh, I don't really look at it like that. I just want to win a game. Um, uh, there's a lot of a lot of talent on the field. Uh, he's a great player, Heisman winner. Uh, it's a lot of a lot of talent on the field, like I said. Uh, and, uh, I'm just looking forward to, to winning the game. Next was Lane Higgins. Lane. Hey, Chris. I wanted to know, given that you are a person that, you know, firsthand dealt with coronavirus and have seen many teammates go through it all throughout the season, kind of what it was like mentally and in the moments when you weren't at practice to kind of go through the season and, you know, know that there was going to have to be sacrifices made, but that there's still going to be tough, you know, points that you have to go through as well. Oh, uh, it's tough. I mean, I mean, we, we outside of football, we're kind of at the, at the house or we can't really do much. But to, to catch it this late in the season, it's tough. I mean, it's terrible timing. And I know mentally I was messed up, uh, especially catching it towards the end of the season. But I mean, you can't really control that. Uh, just try to control what you control and uh, do what's best for the team. And, just, and that, that week, I was just trying to hype my guys up. And I'm just glad we came out with the win that, that week. Next is Nathan Baird. Nathan? Hey, Chris, sort of a, a question on, on the opposite side of that. How how much of you, uh, you can speak for yourself or, or I guess the whole team, how much have you sort of been perceptive of the toll that this has taken on Ryan Day or the rest of the coaching staff? And how have you guys tried to help them? Or has it been more the other way around that they try to hide how much this might be affecting them for the sake of you guys? I mean, it's taking a toll on everybody in the building. Uh, you know, playing a season through the middle of a pandemic. Uh, nobody expected this to happen, but like at the end of the day, we just had to control what we can control and uh, just be there for each other at the end of the day. I mean, we're all going through it. Uh, we haven't seen family in so long, but we got each other here. And that's all, that's all we had to make so many sacrifices this year. And, uh, just come down to the final game, we're in national championship, so. Uh, we're all blessed and we're thankful for the opportunity to play in this game. Mitch, Stacy, Mitch. Hey, Chris, you're likely to be seeing a lot of Patrick Sertan. Um, he's a finalist for the Benaric Award, as you probably know. I'm just wondering what you see on tape uh, from him, what he does well, you know, what you're going to have to do to beat him. Uh, he's a great player. I mean, he he's a he's a great player. Uh, long, fast, physical. Uh, can't really ask for much uh, in the DB. Uh, I know I, I went against uh, Okuda last year. He's damn near equal to him. So uh, he's a he's a great player. And, uh, they got they got great DBs, great linebackers, great defense. Uh, 
talent all over the field. So we have to find a way uh, to beat them. Um, so, so I'm looking forward to it. Next is David Hale. David. Hey, uh, Chris, I, I remember talking to Justin last year about when he first got to Ohio State, and it was obviously such a new experience for him being away from home. I think he's sort of a little bit more of a reserved guy to begin with. Uh, and he was talking about sort of how homesick he was and wondering if you'd made the right decisions. And how did you guys as teammates kind of embrace him? And how have you seen him kind of come out of his shell in the two years that you guys have been together? And, and do you kind of feel like the, the performance that he put on against Clemson under such adverse, obviously, uh, scenario is sort of the culmination of, of how much he has embraced being one of your teammates and wanting to win for you guys at all costs? Uh, that's the kind of guy Justin is. I mean, uh, he's a kind of a shy guy at first, but once he gets comfortable, he's he's comfortable. And uh, to have that game, for him to have that game, um, he had a couple of couple bad games to his standards. And to have that game, especially in the playoffs, it's huge for him and for the team. So. I'm definitely happy for him. Uh, I'm, all, I'm always on the UI side and always have his back. Next will be Tim May. Tim? Yeah, hey, Chris, what is the secret for you guys to catch li that lightning in a bottle like y'all had last Friday night? I mean, as an offense where everything started clicking, the passing game, Justin was on point. Do you? Do you have to go into a game and just let it happen, or do you, what, you know what I mean? How do you keep from pressing for that to happen again? If you follow my drift, uh, that, did, that just doesn't happen. I mean, uh, the chemistry we have, uh, the trust we have in each other. Uh, we all knew we all had trust going into the game with each other. Uh, we all wanted to put it all, pull it all on the field, leave nothing. Uh, Coach Day dialed up some things. Uh, we went out there and executed. Uh, but that doesn't happen. Uh, just that week happens all in the off season, uh, all grinding together, uh, all blood, sweat, and tears, uh, just to come to that game and perform. And like I said, we we dreamed of that since we were kids. And, uh, now we, we were in that moment, and we got a moment. We got a uh, another game to to have fun and cherish. And Next will be Stephen Means. Stephen. Hey, Chris, when you guys go deep on those play action passes, uh, can you kind of tell pre-snap when you're going to be able to be the guy off the line of scrimmage and get a step on him? Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, pre-snap, I could tell, I could see coverages. Uh, I can see where guys going to be. Uh, I'm on the same page as Justin, so whatever he sees, I see. And, uh, definitely on the deep balls, on the play action balls. Uh, I definitely know when, when it's coming to me or when it's going to somebody else. Uh, pre-snap or uh, if they if they switch it post-snap I, I can see that too so uh, like I said we're all on the same page and uh, we know we know where the ball's going to go. Is there anything common you see from defenses on some of those plays? Uh, no nah, just the coverage and, uh, personnel uh, just di just a lot of different things but that's pretty much the, the top. Patrick Murphy Patrick? Chris, so much of the buildup to the last game for when we were talking to you was about, you know, beating Clemson and, and whatnot. Ryan just said that guys didn't come back to, to just be, win that game. They wanted to win the whole thing. How much is that your motivation more so than it was just to get redemption in that game? Oh, yeah. That's what you come to Ohio State for to uh, go to the national championship, win a national championship. Uh, I know we're recruiting. That's why I wanted to come here and uh, play with the best. So. Uh, we get to do that on Monday, and uh, I'm thankful for the opportunity, and it's a huge blessing. Next is Ben Hall. Ben? Hey, Chris. Um, you know, as stated before, you'll be lining up against one of the top cornerbacks in the country in Patrick Sertain. Um, how have your matchups against Sean Wade and practices helped you prepare for these kind of high-caliber matchups? Uh, I mean, since my freshman year, I've there's been a lot of DBs here. Uh, Dan Marnet, Jeff Okuda, uh, Kendall Sheffield, Sean Wade, uh, go down the line. Uh, but Sertain, is, he's, a, he's a great player, uh, one of the best players in the country, I believe. And it's going to be a tough matchup. 
uh, but we got to compete and um, it's going to be fun. I'm just, I'm just happy to be in this opportunity and I'm blessed. Next will be Jacob Benji. Jacob. Hey, Chris. I uh, know you and Garrett have caught in a fair share of the passes. I'm curious if you feel that Jamison Williams is underrated. You know, he had that big touchdown catch against Clemson. So I'm curious what work you've seen from him and just your impressions of Jamison Williams. Uh, that's my guy. I mean, me and Jamison here, we all competed in the offseason. We still compete to this day. Uh, but he's, he's really underrated, I think. Uh, he, he, could, he could take the top off uh, at any time. Uh, one of the fastest players I've seen. Uh, so uh, he's my guy, and uh, I'm happy. I'm happy he had the game that he had. Uh, Thanks for watching. Be sure to click on that subscribe button so you don't miss a single thing. Come visit us over at BuckeyeGrove.com for all the best Ohio State information on the web.